and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your, the bread of life that's being given, that's being distributed to your children. Father God, as we eat on your word, Lord, let it add strength, nourishment to our spirit, our soul, and even our bodies. And Father God, I pray that as we eat your word, as we dissect your word and digest your word, hallelujah, that it's going to give us the strength that we need to live an overcoming life. We thank you in advance for your word because it will accomplish that which it was sent to do. Hallelujah. And because of that, we know that there is a return on the word that's deposited in our heart. And Father God, we receive that by faith in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. and amen. You all may be seated in God's presence. Amen. The year of the open door. Um, 2020 for the Forward Christian Center has been declared, of course, our year of the open door for those that have been around and even uh, hanging in uh, at the Forward Christian Center, we know that 2020 has been declared the year of the open door. Last week, I began to preach and share with you all uh, that many churches, they feel like 2020 for them represents a uh, year of vision. Uh, but when you begin to dissect 2020 biblically, it represents a year of double. 10 plus 10 equals 20. That's double. 20, 20 is double again. And that, for us as believers, lets us know that in this year, God is going to literally give us a double portion. And when you start looking at the scripture biblically, uh, you'll see that anytime God gives you double for something that he has promised you, it is because you have endured some form of a trouble. Uh, many of y'all, 2019 wasn't real pleasant to you. 2019 may have pulled out the worst in you, but can I say that was nothing more than a setup for what God is doing in your life this year for 2020, the year of the open door, the year of open opportunities, the year of open blessings. But you got to believe that God is going to give you that double for your trouble. As I begin to preach out of Revelation, that scripture says that uh, God is going to uh, open up a door that no man can shut. And he's going to open up that door that no man can shut because of our faithfulness to him. I begin to preach that message to encourage those that have been faithful in the things of God, because truth be told, many of y'all have been faithful. But the good news is that God has opened up a door that no man can shut. What's the good news about that? The good news is that it literally takes man out of the equation. It takes them out of the situation. And I think a lot of times we end up thinking that certain, certain men and certain women, because they have an ulterior motive against what God is wanting to do in our life, that it's going to stop the hand of God. But can I decree and declare that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper in 2020? That no weapon based on a person's accusation, nothing a person would say or do is going to stop what God is going to do in your life in this season. But you got to believe it. So this is where I came up with the title of this particular message. Access granted. Somebody say access granted. Yes, Corinthians said that uh, God has put before you a great door. An effectual door. But there are many adversaries. Can I begin to remind you that God has not just opened up a door, but it is a great door. Can I encourage you? One of the great things that I began to explore about this great door is that I've come to understand that great doors hide great things. Okay, okay, all right. Some of y'all are with me because you got to see this because no one puts anything cheap behind a great door 
because it doesn't make sense to have a door that's worth more than the valuable contents that's behind the door. Let me flip the script. I would be a fool to put a cheap old raggedy door in front of something that's going to really cost me something. And likewise, I want you to see this picture. God is saying that he's going to open up not just an average door, not just a mediocre door, but a great door. And you got to put yourself in the mindset that if God is opening up a great door for you, that there are some great things behind the door that he has for you in your life. Some of y'all ain't get excited, but, but I guess y'all waiting for me to get to the good part of the message. But can I say, this is as good as it's going to get. Yes, yes. Because you got to have that spirit of expectation to understand that God has not just a good door in front of you, but a great door. Yes, while you may have encountered some mediocre things in the past. Can I say God is going to begin to open up something that's going to literally blow your mind and accelerate your life beyond your contemporaries. I want to stir your faith to let you know this morning that God is going to do what he says he's going to do concerning your life. Whereas in the past, you may have come to a closed door. But this season, this time, God is saying, access granted. Access granted for those promises. Access granted for that promotion you're looking for. Access granted for the house you're trying to build. Access granted for the raise that you're trying to get. Access granted for the supervisor position that you ain't even tried to apply for. Okay, okay, okay. See, y'all, y'all too mundane, y'all too mundane this morning, but I want you to catch it. Simone Johnson shared with us she shared with us that she got a supervisor position when she went to apply to just be the worker. Her mind was just to be employed. But God's mind was for her to supervise. She saw a natural door. God had before her a great door. And the good news is this. If God can do it for her, he can do the same thing for you. I, I guess the old folks said it like this. When God starts blessing people in the neighborhood, that just means he's about to bless you too if you're in that same neighborhood. But you got to believe in your life that there is access granted. Access granted. So during this season, you got to carry that spirit of expectation. That anything good is about to happen. Hallelujah. Yeah, you got, you got to get that. Because everybody don't feel that way. They, they be feeling like, oh, well, well. Something bad is about to happen because God done been too good to me. But can I say, you can go from good to good and good to gooder. Excuse my language. And then you could go from the gooder to great. And there is a difference because some people's faith is willing to settle for the good. But the Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Corinth to let them know that God didn't just give me a good door. He gave me a great door. And I'm letting you know this morning that God has a great door for you. And it's open with some great things. But you got to access this thing by faith. 
So, so, so 1 Corinthians 16 and 9 says, for a good door, for a mediocre door, for an average door, for a sometime a door, for a ragged door, for a great door. And get this, effectual. Yes, some people might stay on the great door, but miss the effectual. But the effectual is what makes the door so great. See this, effectual, effective. It comes from the root word effect. Which means that this door that God has for you open is going to affect some things in your life. <laughs> it's going to affect your demographic. Oh, your demographic, that's a big word for your neighborhood. <laughs> in other words, you might be in the hood right now. But God is going to give you an effective door. And you're going to go from the hood to being hood rich. And it's going to be effective. And it's going to affect your life. Affect where you are right now. Affect what you're doing right now. Can I decree and declare that some of the things you're doing right now in your life, you ain't going to be able to do it in this next season because God is going to affect your life just that much. To where things going to start shifting, your atmosphere is going to start changing, and the people around you going to start leaving. Did I say that? Yeah. Yeah. And great and effectual door. When I start thinking about effectual, I start thinking about scriptures that says that the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous do what? Yes, yes. This effectual door, it's going to allow some things to avail in your life. It's going to blow you out of the water. It's going to change your income status. Mm, I felt that. It's going to change your income status. You weren't about the hundreds, but God got the thousands. And God got the millions ready for you. And God is saying, access, yes, access granted, not just an open door, but an effective door. In other words, your life is going to flourish more efficiently without the struggles, without the toil, without the, the suffering that many people have to go through. It's going to be effective and it's going to start working in your life for your good. And it's going to be sim simply automatic, just a byproduct of you having the favor of God on your life. So, so the Apostle Paul is letting us know that God has a great door, an effectual door, and it has opened up to him. But the good news is this morning, God is saying the same thing to you. A great and effectual door has opened to you. But you got to be willing to see the great door. Some people can't see the great door because great doors hang on small hinges. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get that, get that, get that in your mind. Great doors hang on small hinges. Some people, get this, minimize the opportunity for what God is wanting to do in their life because it don't look like what they think it should look like. Yeah, yeah. God is saying, don't bypass something that looks big because the opportunity appears to be small. You got to know that that small thing is going to open up some great things in your life. And this is why some people discount small churches. Because they think that small churches mean that they're going to have small influence. 
No, 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 no. God is just saying if the church might be small in numbers, but it's powerful in authority and anointing. And it's going to allow your life to flourish. So don't despise the hinge that is hung on. Because the big doors hang on small hinges. And, 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 the, and the beautiful thing about this is that it shows us this. That the opportunity that you may embark on in this season may be small. But if you stick with it, if you continue to work this thing, it's going to turn into something great in your life. Small, but great. Small beginnings, but great endings. Don't despise the small beginning, because God got something greater in store for your life. But you got to be willing to value the small so that you can embrace the great. So Corinthians says, I have a great door. An effectual door, but it's filled with all kind of adversities. Ooh, this is where it's going to get good. Adversities. This is Paul writing to the church of Corinth. This is his letter. He's saying, man, God done blew my mind. God is performing miracles. God is opening up doors. God is allowing me to oversee these churches. And there's a great door in front of me, but I got some adversaries that I got to go through. And this is where Paul is reminding and letting us know that if you're going through some testings and some struggles right now, you own the right track. When you're going through the afflictions of life, yes, you're on the right page. Because just because you're going through the affliction, it doesn't mean that God ain't going to bless you later on. But it is, it is until after afflict, the affliction, after the trouble, after the struggles, that you'll begin to embrace the great door that God has in front of you. So God is saying, don't back up off of the things of God. Don't back up off, off, off the promises of God. I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do, but all I need you to do is respect those small hinges because they're hanging on a big door for your life. So the way that we're going to access these doors is by our faith. Write it down. Faith is going to give you the access. It's going to give you the access. It's going to give you the access. How are you going to get through the great door? By my faith. How God is going to do what he said he's going to do? By faith. How is he going to access all of the promises that he have for me? By faith. By faith. How are me and my husband going to continue to stay together in the thickest of times? How is God going to allow that miracle to show up in my life? How am I going to get that promotion on what should be a dead-end job? How am I going to get that increase even though I'm on a fixed income? By yes. By faith. You're going to access the door by faith. So here's what doors represents. And you can write it down. I want you to understand the doors. It's going to represent change. Transitions. Doors symbolize new space. Remember, the second week I preached that doors represent new dimensions. Got a little time today, I can teach. New dimensions. So many people get excited about levels. But I get excited about dimensions. 
Levels represent good. Dimensions represent great. And there's a difference. Last week I said that doors represent new territory. Anytime you walk through a door, you're coming into new territory. New space. Last week I also said that that new territory represented a relocation. How many of y'all moved in your spirit? Some of y'all moved. Y'all not even in the same neighborhood that you once was. And you got to get this. When you move in your spirit, you're going to move in the natural. So doors represent all of these things. Doors represents, get this, portals. Some of y'all, when y'all came into Ford Christian Center through those doors, you came into a new portal, a new atmosphere. And y'all, I I believe after this particular sermon series, you'll never see doors quite the same again. When you start going into people's houses, that got a lot of turmoil and struggle and strife. Instead of you going through that door, you don't say, no. Why am I opening that door in my life? That's something that God need to do for them. When people are pulling on your life and people are begging, borrowing, and stealing from you, but when you're in that predicament, they're nowhere to be found, Don't open that door. So doors represent all of these things. But here's the new new. Doors represent rooms. New rooms in your life. This is what God is saying to his church this morning. God is opening up new rooms for you to go in in your life. Rooms not just filled with stuff, but filled with great things, great opportunities, great business deals, great contracts. Hallelujah. Things that's going to revolutionize your life. Because you got to see this. The importance of rooms is that you can enter into one room in your life and it'll change your life forever. New rooms are going to introduce you to new people, new friends, new benefactors. Yeah, some decreeing and declaring new benefactors coming into this place. Financial benefactors, benevolent benefactors, people that love to give, people that love to serve, people that love to live their life so that God can be glorified. And the same thing is going to happen in your life where God is going to add to your life and finance your dreams. Dreams, visions. You're looking for a loan. When God is going to send you your Cyrus. Yeah. Yeah, somebody that's going to finance what the Lord is wanting to do in your life. People, get this, that don't even like the Lord. But they're going to partner with you so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be glorified in the earth. So that forward Christian sinner can get the gospel out. Yeah. So God is going to open up doors to new rooms. But faith is going to give you the access. But many people are afraid of the access because they're walking in fear. And you got to understand this about fear is that it will keep you from accessing everything that God has for you in your life. Because fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Because you haven't seen it happen in your life back then, your faith is gone. And fear has set in. And you feel like, well, well, God, he hasn't done it for me just yet. I don't know if he's going to do it. I'm here today to let you know that it is access granted. 
for his promises. Access granted for what God is wanting to do in your life. God doesn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I'm calling you out of that fear today. You can be everything that God said that you can be. You can do everything that God said that you can do. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Access granted concerning the promises of God. We'll never be broke. We'll never have less than. All of our needs will always be met. Every one of our bills shall be paid on time. God is putting us in a new room, y'all. He's giving you a green light on that situation. So stop walking in fear. He ain't failed you yet. Neither will he ever. Because I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. Whatever God says that he's going to do, he's going to do it in your life. Because the promises of God are yea and amen. In other words, access. Yes. Get it in your spirit. Hallelujah. I ain't got to rush today. I can teach. Faith will give you the access. Stop tolerating fear. You are not less than. The black community can rise up. Puerto Rican community can rise up. Mexican community can rise up. We can be what God says that we are. For a Christian center, we'll be like the black Wall Street. Look it up if you don't know. Where everybody prospering. Where everybody increasing. Where everybody needs are met. And everybody barns are full. So faith will give you the access. Romans 5 and 2 says this. Through whom we have gained what? By what? Through whom we have gained access. By faith. Who is the whom? Jesus. He has given us access by faith. In other words, God is saying that whatever he asks for you, you got to access this thing by faith. This past week, uh, Ford Christian Center, some of Ford Christian Center staff, and uh, some of the, our leaders and those that's in leadership positions, we were able to go to a conference called All Access, hosted by our bishop, Bishop Von McLaughlin, another part of his house, and the National Ministries. And one of the things they did was they gave us a badge. First, we had to register. Uh, we had to pay a fee. fee was $50 each for those that came. Paid the fee, registered, and they gave us a badge. And the badge simply says that we have not just some access, but all access. And the whole theme and thought for the particular conference was that he was opening up all of the different ministries, uh, the media ministry, the praise team, the dance team, the admin staff, the helps ministry, pastoral care, basically every ministry that the Potter's House has the privilege to run over their 30-some-odd years of ministry, they open up to those that wanted to pay the fee, get this, to give them all access to everything that they had in their wherewithal. We took some of those that were in our staff there. And as long as you have the pass. Get this. You can get into the rooms. As long as you have the pass, as long as you register to get the pass, you can get into the different rooms in ministry. 
And the Lord dropped in my spirit. He said, the same way you had to register to get into those rooms is the same thing that believers have to do to get into the new rooms that I have for their life. You must first register to get in the rooms. But the only way that you're going to access it is by faith. Faith is going to be your access. Yeah. Romans says that through him, through Jesus Christ, he has given us access by faith. But so many people want the new rooms. They want the promises of God, but they haven't registered their faith to get what God is wanting to get them in their life. Could you be asking for a miracle, but you don't have the faith to connect with it to get it? You're going to have to pay a price. It's going to be a fee that's going to be involved with you getting access to the new rooms. But God is saying he has those open rooms for you, but you got to be willing to access this thing by the faith that you have in God. So here's what all access means. It means God is going to give us the ability to approach his promises. It's going to be admittance. Yes, you're going to be admitted to get the promises that God has for you. You're going to also have the permission to enter. Certain doors, certain rooms, everybody's not able to get in. And Because everybody's not able to get into those doors, don't let that stop you from getting everything that God has for you to get. Don't come to church just because your friend is coming to church. Don't come to church just because you're a part of a ministry. Come to church because you're ready to access everything that God has for your life. Because you got to work on this thing for yourself. It can't be based on your wife. It can't be based on your husband. It can't be based on your children. It can't be based on your friends. You got to get everything that God has for you. So all access means that you're able to approach, you're able to be admitted, and you're able to have permission to enter. In other words, all access means that you're able to get this, get in every place you need to go without any hindrance or obstruction. Everywhere you're going, that great door is where God is taking you. That great door is where God is leading you. And he's going to allow you to access it without any hindrance. And you're going to be able to go through some rooms, get this, where other people are going to be jealous that you're in. Rooms that people are jealous that you're in. You're going to start doing some things that's going to make people envious of your life. Got to understand, I, 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 I didn't say uh, jealous because, you know, sometimes people can get over jealousy. But envious people, they really don't get over that. Because what God is about to do in your life, it's going to cause a separation to come from some of the people that you are closest to in your life. But God is saying for you, there is access granted. (laughs) Access means that you're able to get it every place without any hindrance or obstructions. And you get this. You'll have the green light to enter into doors that other people can't get in. Everybody can't go with God taking you. And I'm here today to let you know, don't have your life hung up because you're trying to take somebody into a place that they don't have access to get in. Everybody can't see your dream. Everybody can't see your vision. 
Everybody can't see what God has promised for you. And this is why some people, you know, they, they, they get caught up into telling the person what God is about to do. And that person tell you, well, I don't quite see it that way. Oh, uh, you ain't really got that money right now. But remember I told you, small hinges are connected to great doors. And although you might have not have all the financial wherewithal to get it, God will open up the doors as you walk into those new places and walk into those new rooms. But you can't be afraid to go in it because it's going to be a, a access by the, your faith in God. All access. You'll get to have that green light. And then also, it'll allow you to access things that were once off limit to you. The room that you can't quite seem to get in. God has given you the green light. It's your time. It's your season. Believe it. Receive it. Speak it. Confess it. Declare it. Because it's going to happen. Don't you see the door? Don't you see the open door? You got to have that thing down in your spirit. And it can't be in the spirit of nobody else. You got to get this thing for yourself. And it's going to allow you to open up these three different types of doors. And you can write it down. Number one, a presence door. Your faith is going to open up a presence door. This door, it opens up while you're in the presence of the Lord. That's the good news. That's, that's why I love coming to a gathering of worship. That's why I love worshiping God, even in my house and in my car, or on my job, because his presence is there. And this great door is going to be open because of the presence of the Lord that's in your life. It's just like when you go up to a, a Winn-Dixie or a Walmart and you get ready to walk in front of that door. And as soon as it feels your presence, the door open. That's why it's important to stay in God's presence. Because his presence will unlock some things in your life. The blessings that God has bestowed upon my life and my wife's life, we didn't get it outside of his presence. He gave it to us in his presence. He gave us wisdom and insight. To do this and to make that move and, to, and allow understanding to come and allow those doors to be open. All of these things happen in God's presence. So that's why anytime God opens up the house of the Lord, it's good to get into his presence because that's where his promises are. You'll find your healing. You'll find your deliverance. You'll find your encouragement. You'll find your strength. You'll find your hope. God will begin to put your marriage back together. He'll begin to put your life back together. He'll allow your kids to start making some A's when they've been making some else, all because they've been in God's presence. You don't believe me? Scripture says it like this. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, what? 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 Pleasures forevermore. You're looking for the pleasures, but can I say you can't get the pleasures without his presence? Everybody wants his pleasures. They want the increase. They want the benefits. They want the blessings. But God said, hold on, what about my presence? Because when you get your pre my presence, you'll get the blessings. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, pleasures, that which I need forevermore. Second door is going to be, hallelujah, a push door. Some of y'all, y'all going to experience this push door where you're going to feel a little resistance, a little resistance. That's something that I even feel right now. I feel a little resistance where I'm trying to get your faith level up so you can really understand that God has that promise for you. You worrying about it, but God is saying he didn't work it out. 
and I'm pushing on it. And some of y'all I'm pushing because you, you, you still don't quite get it. You think that God is going to throw you away. You think that God is not going to bless you. But I'm here today to let you know that if you're just feeling the pressure, but the pressure is good news because it's just a sign that God is going to open up the door for you in your life. But you got to keep on pushing. What does the push mean? You got to pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. It ain't over. Don't throw in the towel. Keep on pushing. Pushing with your prayer. Keep on pushing with your prophecy. Declaring the word of God over your life that I'm going to live and not die. And declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God is protecting my health from sickness and disease. I'm above only and not beneath. Hallelujah. I'm the first, not the last. I'm ahead and not the tail. The lender and not the borrower. You ain't got to go to that check cashing place no more. Open up your bank account. The push doors. Then I'm going to close with this finally. You have those purpose doors. Doors that only unlock when you start walking in purpose. The presence door is good because anytime you come into his presence, God's blessings are going to flow. The push doors is good because it builds that spiritual fortitude that you need that spiritual resistance to last and weather the changes and the times and the seasons in your life. It builds your strength. That's why the scripture says that uh, you, you got to work that faith. You got to exercise your faith to use that push door because there's some resistance. But this purpose door is something that's totally Connected to your walk with God. When you walk in his will and purpose, the door automatically opens. All right. Purpose doors. When you live in a purpose-driven life, a life where you're fulfilling the will of God for what he called you to do. And this is a door that every one of us in here have to have unlocked. Are you a man that's walking in purpose? Are you a woman that's walking in the purpose? Do you know what the plan and the will of God is for your life? It's important because once you find that plan, when you find the will of God for your life, things will begin to open up like never before. How do I know? For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a hope and a future. When you're in this plan, you're going to have the hope. When you're in this plan, you're going to have a future. When you're in this plan, he's going to prosper you. It's all part of God's plan. But you got to be willing to walk in his purpose. And when you walk in his purpose, and when you walk in his will, God will do this. Open up a room just for you to go in. Scripture says like this. Your gift will then make room for you and bring you before great men. Where are the great men at? Behind great doors. It makes sense, duh. Great men don't gather around or behind raggedy doors. Dignitaries 
men of esteem, they don't gather behind raggedy doors. They gather behind great doors because they're in great rooms. And God is saying he's going to open up the great room for you so you can be introduced to some great people in life. Your gift is making room for you right now. Your business not going under. It's going over. Your bills might be in the red right now, but just hold on. It's going to be green. Yes. Your gift will make room for you and bring you before great people. People are that's going to elevate your life. People that's going to allow your life to shoot in a trajectory that's going to blow your mind. So I'm letting you know this morning, fasten your seatbelt. You about to go on a ride. Fasten your seatbelt. Your life is about to change. Fasten your seatbelt. Because things are about to shift in your favor. Because God is saying, access granted. Ooh. All right. All right. Access granted. This past week, I told y'all, we went to the All Access Conference. Minister Toff, come on up here. Had a few of our leaders oh. go to the conference. Pastor Zay, come on up here. Yeah, come, 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 stand right here. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Amazon. Chief Amazon. Y'all do know she was a chief in the Navy. <laughs> Teresa. Foster. Minister Christine. To get through new doors, I said you have to have a pass. You have to have a badge. That badge is what? It's all accessed by your faith, right? All right. I see a door behind me. When did that door show up? Wow. See this door. Didn't I say God is going to take you into new rooms? But in order to go through the room, you got to have all access. Okay, this got my name on it, Pastor Charles. I can go into the new room in my life. I feel the old folks right now saying, come on in the room. <laughs> come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor. He writes out all of my scriptures. Gives me all of my medicine. In, in the room. Now y'all shot it. We ain't going, we ain't going there. Man. Me in the room. Y'all gonna really do this. Right. All of my scripts. I thought it was prescriptions. My medicine in the room. Yeah, uh, y'all too much, y'all too much. So that song, I don't know who wrote it, but she was wise enough to know that there was something in the room. And I'm here today to let you know there's something in the room for you too. But you got to make sure that you have all access by faith to get in there. Come on, Pastor Zay, you like you got a little badge. Right. 
she, she, she can go into that room. Okay, okay, cool, cool. All right. Foster, you got your badge on? What, turn around, let me see. Let me, you, you know people be trying to steal people badges. Is, is, is your name on it? Okay, 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 her name on it. All right. There we go. Access granted. Ah, y'all getting it, y'all getting it. All right. All right, y'all in the room. Great room. Amazon. That's your name? You got faith? I got it. All right. All right. In other words, access? Mm. Minister Christia, come on up here. You're a minister here at the Ford Christian Center. You serve here at the Ford Christian Center. All right. All right. God has a great door for you. Go ahead. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Before, before they fight up here, before they fight, before they fight, he asked her, where her badge? Y'all got to get this. Your badge is your what? No, oh, y'all got it, y'all got it. It's hard for her to go into this new room with no faith. God has the room. It's ready for you. It's a great door. But the only way that you can access this thing is by your faith. Some rooms don't open if you ain't got the faith to go in it. Get this. Although she has a relationship with me, I got my badge. She ain't got one. The bouncer. I got to use the bouncer, y'all, because y'all know about them clubs. <laughs> yeah, y'all know about them clubs. The bouncer, he going to let me in. Because I got my badge. I got the faith. Come, come on. Come on. Come on. Try try. And some of y'all, y'all got to get this. Everybody can't go where God is taking you. And just because you got the faith to get there, you got to make sure that the person that you're rolling with got their own bad too. Because new rooms won't open for unauthorized people. And sometimes we got those people associated with our life. They was good for the old season. That was good for what we used to do. That was good for where we used to hang out. But God is saying this new room that I'm trying to take you into can only be accessed by faith. And if they ain't got the faith, they can't go with you. So keep your faith. Don't give up. God's promises are yea and amen. He's going to give you everything that he said he's going to do. He's going to do what he said he's going to do in your life. But you got to make sure you keep your all-access pass. Don't be afraid of going in the rooms. And I'm going to say it like this. Sometimes the rooms that God is going to take you into, you ain't going to understand everything that's going on. But just keep your ears open. Because God is going to start giving you wisdom. 
He's going to God start giving you knowledge and understanding. And although you might be listening right now in that room, one day you're going to be running that room. Great room, great doors. It's been made available to us, but we got to access it by faith. And what God is saying to his church this morning is that whatever he has planned for your life, it is access. That's all I have for you. Let's give God some praise.